Hello everybody and welcome back. So before we start today's video, I would like to ask that y'all please click that subscribe button. It would really help us out in the long run and it would help motivate us to create more content for you guys in all honesty. Um, and if you can see these numbers here, they're actually quite an improvement from what I showed y'all the other day. Um, though it may have only been a day or two, it's still a noteworthy improvement which I really appreciate from you guys. So continue to click that subscribe button and let's keep going strong. Um, we're almost at 200 subscribers, so let's try to reach that goal, okay? Um, and also refer to my previous video because I actually announced the sweepstakes to win a free $25 gift card of your choosing. Uh, however, to enter, you must uh, answer three questions on a Google form and you must click that subscribe button. Only subscribers can participate, so remember that, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started on this video. So guys, what you're looking at right here is actually something that is pretty simple. It is a very, very basic program. However, it is a lot more powerful than you might think at first. Um, this program is called Floating IPS, and it is what I use to personalize my ROM hacks. Uh, I don't create the ROM hacks myself. I do not have those kinds of skills. However, there are various places online where you can actually download ROM hacks. However, if you've ever downloaded a ROM hack and you discover you can't run it on a normal emulator, it is because a ROM hack is not actually a normal ROM. It is something that needs to be patched with this tool right here that I'm showing you guys right now. Um, this nifty little program will actually take your files, your ROMs, and will patch them with this IPS to create a file that does not actually override your ROM at all. Um, it'll keep your data, so you'll have a copy of the modified ROM and the regular ROM, the original. Um, that's what I like about it so much. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how it works. Okay, so please don't allow me to jump ahead of myself, guys. I almost did that. Um, but I figured I'd go ahead and show you how to actually download it. Um, I'm not going to actually go to the website, but down in the description, I will post links to everything. Um, the emulators you can use, where to get floating IPS, where to get ROM hacks, all of that. So I'll cover that all down in the description. Just keep your eyes out for that, guys. Um, so after you download the floating IPS program from online, it will appear in your downloads folder, uh, something kind of like this. Um, It'll be called floating. Um, so this is not a normal folder. It's a compressed folder, a zip folder, as you uh, or some people call it. So first you need to open it, double click. And uh, you'll see a bunch of different programs and folders in here. Now don't delete any of that. Um, what you wanna do is actually go to extract all. And you wanna browse for a destination folder. So what I typically do is I'll go to my desktop and create a folder. Well, in my case, I already have one, so I don't need that. Um, let me delete that real quick. Oh, never mind. Uh, so you select your destination folder, you click select, and you click extract. Well, I'm not going to click it because I already have it in that folder. I don't want to create duplicates. So um, after you click that, um, it should extract. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds, depending on your internet speed. Then you want to close out of that. And um, what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to go to the program itself. Okay, so now that I have the file extracted and I have the program opened itself, uh, I'm going to show you what you need to do next. So what this program basically does, as I explained just a moment ago, is it takes ROM hacks, which are individual files themselves. You can't play them on an emulator. And uh, if you want to do that, if you want to play an emulator uh, with, uh, that has a ROM hack, you'll need to click Apply Patch. And then you'll want to go to whatever folder that you're, um, you want to go to whatever folder that, oh, damn it, hold on, guys. All right, sorry about that, guys. So uh, what you'll want to do next is you'll want to uh, select the folder where you store your ROM uh, hacks, where you can download them from online. Um, in my case, I actually keep them in a folder on my desktop called ROM hacks, and I already have a few that are stored here. So, um... If they match the actual, or if they're compatible with the uh, ROM patcher that you select, they should have a matching icon. See, they're all uh, called floating IPS file. Okay, so you just want to select whatever one you have. In my case, I'm going to select Super Mario 200 because I did a video on that the other day and I love that one. So you want to click open, and then it'll have it'll ask you to select a file to patch, which will be the ROM that you select. So. Um, in my case, where I keep my uh, where I keep my files, my ROMs, is in a folder called Vinesauce ROMs on my desktop. 
and uh, you'll want to select whatever ROM that's compatible with the ROM hack. So if it's a, an N64 ROM hack, you'll want to select an N64 game, or preferably the game that the ROM hack was made for. So I'm going to go ahead and click Super Mario 64, and click Open. Okay, and this is all automatic, by the way. Um, next, you'll want to select an output file, which will be the file that it save at, saves as. It'll save this as an actual ROM hack, a playable ROM hack. So uh, make sure to keep this somewhere safe where you'll remember, or wherever you'll be able to uh, select it whenever you get ready to play it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click Corrupted ROMs, and you get to give it whatever name you want. So um, I'm going to go ahead and give it the name Super Mario 200. No, I'm actually going to give it the name Juicy J's Adventures. Yeah, even though I don't think I can, ha I can have an apostrophe. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm going to save it as um, the file extension has to be what's compatible with your emulator. So uh, for N64 games, what I typically do is save it as a Z64 file, which are compatible with N64 emulators, or most of them at least. So click save. And uh, yeah, see, a message should pop up saying uh, the patch was applied successfully. Um, can't really see it, but there you go. All right. And then after that, um, you'll want to click OK, and then Apply and Run. So at this point, you should be able to select the ROM, or the ROM hack that you did just now. Um, and to be able to find it, you're going to have to click this box right here, and click All Files. And voila, you got it right here. Corrupted ROMs. There we go. OK. Actually, guys, I messed up that step. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> so as you can see here, it says select patch to use, or if my cursor's not pointing where I want it to, um, just ignore that. So this uh, point, you have to select the patch again. So I'm going to go back to ROM hacks, and I'm going to select the ROM hack that I use, Super Mario 200. Okay? And then you select the base file, which again is the ROM that you're wanting to hack. So. I'm going to go back to my Vine Sauce ROMs, and I'm going to select Super Mario 64. And after that, it'll ask you to select an emulator. Um, it's just loading real quick, guys. Okay, so now, guys, it'll ask you to select an emulator to use. And then this step is very important because you have to choose a right kind of emulator to be able to get results. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click the emulator that I use. Um, oh yeah, where I keep mine. I keep mine in here. This is where most emulators for the N64 install automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and select Project 64 because that's the emulator I use. Okay. Now if you just give it a second, it'll start to play the game. Um, it may not start automatically. However, you're about to see what I did. Sorry about that, guys. Um, it took a second to boot up. However, it finally did. So um, after you do all the steps that I just told you guys um, and your emulator opens up, at that point, you should be able to just go to File and wait for it to pop up. And you'll want to open the ROM that you or the ROM hack that you just made. See? Um, well, you can't see it, I don't think. Um, you just select the ROM that you want to play. Okay, just wait for it. Okay. Okay, there we go, guys. It took a second. However, I finally got it working. Um, all right. Okay, see, guys, a piece of cake. Uh, doesn't take more than a few minutes. I'm going to post the links for where you can download all these things, all these tools online uh, down in the description. So make sure to check that out after you finish the video. Uh, please click that like and subscribe button because, again, it will help us out greatly, guys. Um, I'm loving the progress we're making so far, and I love making videos for you guys. So let's just keep going at it, keep going strong, and I know we can do it. Uh, we can make the 200 subscribers and further beyond that. I, trust me, I, I, know, I know where we can go, and if, if we just stick together, we can accomplish anything. So um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, stay tuned for uh, an upload tomorrow. Uh, I might be doing some more ROM hacks um, for you guys for the game Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Genesis. So uh, just stay tuned for that, guys, and you'll have a great rest of y'all's day. Thanks for watching.